Welcome to a new episode on this series on setting up a full ECS infrastructure stack to orchestrate Docker containers. Hello, you're on Pablo's Park. I'm George. Today is a day that I'll stand up my WordPress on ECS infrastructure stack. This will be an iterative process until I get my WordPress infrastructure stack fully stood up and the web application is accessible through the internet. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interest, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by the way. So, let's start coding. In the previous episode, I have made all the necessary preparations to be able to start running Telegram commands. So let me go ahead and start the process of standing up my infrastructure using Telegram. So let me head to my terminal. And in case I end up making changes today, I'll pull all the latest on my local machine by running git pull and then creating a new branch for today's changes. In the root of my repository, I'm going to start running Telegram plan to see what happens. I will need to export the environment variables for my AWS credentials, as well as my Terraform workspace. And now I can go ahead and start running the Telegram command. The Telegram plan failed. And if I scroll to the error on this run, by the error alone, I can tell what the problem is. I am enclosing a value that is already a list into a list and assign it to my subnets property. So this is redundant. So let me go ahead and fix this. I'm going to head to my load balancer Terraform module and open main.tf. And on line six, now that that's fixed, let me go back to my terminal and rerun my Telegram plan. I'm getting a new set of errors here. So let me head to that section that shows the actual errors. This error is complaining about missing entries in my parameter store. And I know straight away that this has to do with my ECS module. When I updated the Telegram configuration file for my ECS Terraform module, I added a dependency with the DB Terraform module. My DB Terraform module populates the parameter store entries, which are not available yet. In order to work around this error, I need to temporarily exclude ECS from the plan. However, my ASG Terraform module is also dependent on ECS, so I need to make sure that I exclude both of them. The Telegram plan was successful, so let me go ahead and apply this. I'm getting an error on Telegram apply, so let's have a look. The first error is complaining about an invalid character on my database name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my DB Terraform module and then open my Telegram configuration file. So the problem here is that I'm passing a dash on the string, which AWS doesn't allow. So let me go ahead and get rid of the dash. And I need to implement the same thing for my database master username and then save that. So let me go back to my terminal and see the rest of the errors. And I also get a validation error in here that says an SSL policy cannot be specified for HTTP listeners. So this has to do with my load balancer Terraform module. So let me go to my explorer and open main.tf on my load balancer Terraform module. The error was complaining about line 35. And the error would be complaining about the protocol property that is missing on this block. So I need to add this property and set it to HTTPS. Now let me go back to my terminal. And I think that's the last error in the list that I need to address. So now let me try rerunning Terraform apply once again. My Telegram apply command was successful. This also means that my parameter store entries have now been created. So what I'm going to do next is rerun my Telegram apply without any exclusions. My Telegram apply failed. I'm getting this error about a malformed property of my container definition. So let me head to my browser and on my ECS Terraform module, I'll open main.tf and I'm going to head to that section where my container definition is. And the command property is set on my Nginx container. So let me head to that section. The command property is expected to be a list, but I have set the property to a string. So let me change that. While we are on the container definition section, there are a few items in here that need to be changed. On my WordPress container definition section, I have not set any port mappings. This means the WordPress container will not be accessible anywhere inside the instance. So what I need to do is define port mapping to expose my WordPress container on port 8080. 
So what this also means is that I need to make the necessary adjustments to my custom Nginx configuration file. This is to make sure that my Nginx container forwards the web request to my WordPress container port. So on my browser, I'm going to head to ASG and then head to my template directory and then open the server conf template file. I need to change the port on line 9, which points to the port for my WordPress container, and change that to port 8080. Another thing to note here is the reference to the container name. Because these containers will be started by ECS, the container names will be dynamic. However, both Nginx and WordPress containers will be accessible inside the EC2 instance that my auto-scaling will initialize. So what I can do to ensure this will work is I need to replace the word WordPress with the private IP address of the EC2 instance. And to achieve this, I will go to my user data template file. And then I will get the private IP address of the EC2 instance. And then I need to add the command that replaces any occurrences of the word WordPress in the custom Nginx file to the private IP. So it will look like this. I also need to fix line 10 to make sure that the custom configuration file is created properly. The final piece that I need to change as far as custom Nginx configuration file is concerned is to save the file as a default config on my ECS container. And so I'm going to go back to my ECS Terraform module. I have defined the file mounting of my custom Nginx configuration file inside my locals.tf. So let me open that file. And on this file, I will set the host path to the location of my config file inside the EC2 instance. And I also need to update the container path property to point to the actual default configuration file path. I also need to change the read-only property on this block and set it to false. Because I'm allowing my Nginx as a request forwarder to my WordPress application, I need to make sure that the redirection is handled properly by my load balancer health checks. So let me head to my load balancer module and open main.tf. I need to head down to the target group resource. And on the health check property, I need to add a matcher property that will allow HTTP status codes 200 and 301 through to 399 as healthy HTTP status codes. Now back to my ECS locals at TF. Because I'm using the actual default Nginx configuration file name, I no longer need to set a custom command on my Nginx. So if I go back to my container definition block on my main.tf, and then head to the section for Nginx. I can now get rid of line 86. And now I'm going to head to my terminal and rerun Telegram apply. I'm getting a new error here, so let's have a look. This new error on missing operator seems to suggest that my container definition is not set properly. So let me go back to my main.tf on my ECS Terraform module. And I can see straight away from my VS Code that there's a hint that my block is not properly set. So let me fix that. And now let me go back to my terminal and then run Terragrunt apply again. Terragrunt apply failed. So let's have a look at the error. The error points to my ECS Terraform module line 104 on main.tf. So let's head to my explorer, open the main.tf for my ECS, and then go all the way down to line 104. The problem here is that the inline policy is using effects instead of effect. It is also referencing resources instead of resource. So let's fix that. While I am on this blog, I need to update a list of actions enabled in this policy. My ECS task will need permission to CloudWatch logs and parameter store entries. So I need to add the necessary permissions to this policy. And now I'm going to head back to my terminal and rerun Telegram apply. I'm getting a new set of errors here, so let's have a look. It says invalid base64 encoding of user data. So I know straight away that this has to do with my auto scaling group Terraform module. So let's head back to my explorer and then open the main.tf on ASG. And on line 14 is my AWS launch template resource. So if I scroll down and search for the user data property, what the error message complains about is that my user data is not base64 encoded. So let's fix that. And now I'm going to head back to my terminal and then rerun Telegram apply. Telegram apply failed again. And this new error is complaining on missing availability zones property in my auto scaling group resource. So what I'm going to do is head to my data.tf on my auto scaling module 
and define a data reference block that pulls all availability zones. And now I'll head to my auto scaling group resource on main.tf and add the missing availability zones property with values sourced from the data reference that I just set. And now I'm going to head back to my terminal and rerun Teragrand apply. My Teragrand apply is successful. I'm going to attempt to run a basic curl to check if my WordPress web application infrastructure has been created successfully. Notice that the curl command is just sitting there. This will eventually time out. So what's happening here? A redirection is triggered by the WordPress container which involves a red definition of the entry point to the web application. Although I started the request with HTTPS, the redirection initiated by the WordPress container goes to HTTP, which my load balancer does not allow. So what I need to do in order to handle this scenario is add a new load balancer listener to translate HTTP inbound request to HTTPS. So let me head to my load balancer Terraform module and open main.tf. And then at the end of this file, I'm going to add a new AWS LB listener resource. I'm going to set the load balancer ARN property to point to the load balancer resource. And then I'm going to set the port property to 80, set the protocol to HTTP, and then set a default action that does the redirection of requests from HTTP to HTTPS. I also need to open up inbound flow to my load balancer on port 80. So I need to update my load balancer security. Now I'm going to head to my terminal and then rerun Teragrant apply. My Teragrant apply was successful. Now I'm going to rerun my curl command. And that went through and notice that I now have two redirections. The first one is handled by the WordPress container. And the second one is handled by the load balancer translating the HTTP request to HTTPS. So what I'm going to do next is go to my browser and then access the WordPress web application. Let me configure my WordPress application. And now if I go ahead and access the main page, the page loads fine. And that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content of this channel. Until next time, and as always, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.